Process mining is a technique that applies data science to discover, validate, and improve workflows. The overall goal of process mining is to turn business event data into insights and actions. Process mining as a capability is a recent addition to Power Automate. In this video, I will take a look at how it works. My name is Henrik Marx Larsen and I've been working with Dynamics 365, Finance and Operations, and its predecessor since 1997. For many years, I worked internationally as an IT professional implementing line of business applications, but today I work as a technology specialist at Microsoft. In this short video, we'll start by looking at how we can ingest process event data into the process mining tool. Once we have loaded meaningful data into the tool, we will use the capabilities available to understand the process and look for optimization opportunities. When we have found what we believe to be an optimization opportunity, we will compare it to the best practice process to see what the impact is if we optimize the process. This is the landing page for process mining in Power Automate. I have a number of options on this page to get me started. I can start with a predefined template such as procure to pay for SAP, but in my example, I will simply start from a known data source. So I click on start here. First step in the creation process is to select the data source. A data source can either be a structured data source, such as a file, database, or an OData endpoint, or it could simply be a recording of the process. In this example, we use a CSV file we have generated from the ERP system. The file contains process event data from the AP refund management process. This process is performed to reimburse customers for financial claims. In this step, we must select the type of data source we would like to use. In our case, we select text slash CSV, but as you can see, the system supports a multitude of data sources. Here, I simply select the CSV file containing the process event data. Depending on the type of data source we selected in the previous step, the dialog may differ and require additional authentication details. The following data preview allows me to ensure that the data mapping from the file appears correct. In this step of the data ingestion process, I'm able to use Power Query to filter and transform data from the file, if required, Process mining requires three attributes to be present in the file to enable analysis. The mandatory attributes are case ID, the identification of an end-to-end -end process, activity, a step within a case, event start, the start date and time for the activity. Obviously, to have the ability to analyze other metrics such as financial impact, it is important to map as many attributes as possible. By default, all attributes from the file are mapped to the event level attribute type. This means that the attribute describes something that relates to the individual activity within a case. However, I've made some adjustments to the mapping to enable the analysis. I have mapped the resource attribute from the file to the resource attribute type to see who has carried out the activity. Then I have mapped the start and end times to enable us to fully analyze the duration of an activity. I have mapped the case ID from the file to the case ID attribute type to give each case a unique ID. Lastly, I have mapped the name of the activity to the activity attribute type to give the activity a name in the analysis. This completes the data ingestion activity and we are now ready to click on save and analyze to get our analysis. The 
The results of the analysis are now ready to view. The report contains three important metrics. The process is performed in 10 different variations. In total, the tool has analyzed 133 cases, and on average, each case consists of 13 activities. The analysis report gives us a quick view of the results, but I would like to delve further into the findings. I will download and open the report in the Process Mining app. Straight away, when we open the analysis in the app, we can see that we now have a range of new capabilities such as customization that we did not have in the browser-based view. In this video, we will only explore some of these capabilities, but I will encourage you to use the training and tutorials available to explore the full breadth of the solution. Now, we were looking for optimization opportunities, and if we look at this process map, what immediately catches my eye is the complete the customer memo activity, which has the highest number of occurrences apart from the entry and exit activities. The number of occurrences is indicated visually by the size of the blue bubble around the number. Let's use the tools available to explore our hypothesis in more details. In the customization pane, we select the performance section with total duration as our analysis component. This shows us that the complete customer memo activity takes 2.94 weeks in total to complete. This is by far the worst performing activity and shows that our initial hypothesis was probably correct. If we change the analysis component to mean duration, we see that the activity that has the highest duration on average is the refund with special voucher activity, but the complete customer memo is still in third place. This indicates that the activities relating to exception handling may take up a very high proportion of the total effort. Now, this may not be an issue if the financial impact is not great. However, the financial analysis indicates completing customer memos cover $90K out of a total of $180K. That means that almost 50% of all invoices are managed by exception. I believe we have now proved our hypothesis and proved that producing customer memos is time consuming and costly. Let's now look at how this sub process compares to the sub-process where no exception handling is required. Before we are able to come to a final conclusion, we would like to compare the process that includes customer memos with the process that does not to see what the difference is. To compare two process versions, we need to filter the process map and save the results as views. We use the filter button in the left hand corner to do this. First, we create and save a filter where the activity name attribute does not include the value complete the customer memo. This is the filtered result, a simple process with 68 occurrences. As you can see at the top, the view is saved with the name without customer memo. We create another filter. This time we include cases with customer memos. The result is what appears to me a much more complex process. This process has 65 occurrences. We now use the process compare feature to compare the two processes. The base layer in our comparison is the process with customer memos. To add the other process to the comparison, we click on the add layer button. It is clear from the comparison that the customer memo process in blue 
is substantially more complex than the standard process in red. If we select the complete the customer memo activity, we can see it has required rework in 42.48% of all cases. We have successfully used the process mining tool to discover a great candidate for process optimization. This completes my short introduction to process mining in Power Automate. If you want to know more about process mining in Power Automate and maybe try it out, please visit this site.